uh, Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis. Uh, Congresswoman, always great to see you. Just a quick reaction to what Kelly's describing here, because we've got a situation where we have a labor shortage on our hand. That's part of the problem in the economy right now. Yet you've got this administration saying businesses have to mandate vaccinations, keeping people on the sidelines. Yeah, I think Republicans need to focus this fight on, in the legal battle and challenging this in court. And we know on January 7th, the Supreme Court is going to hear President Biden's vaccine mandate. And I think that's that's where we all have to put our attention, our focus, and our fight. Because not only is it going to have immediate impacts on our economy, on the supply chain, on work and production, uh, but you're also going to see um, the impact that this can have going forward as it sets a precedent for, for generations. Uh, so that's that's where I would be encouraging people to focus. I think, uh, you mm. know, Republicans were critical when Democrats gave unemployment uh, and incentivized people to actually stay home as, a, as opposed to reporting to work um, which created a, a major labor shortage. Uh, I think sort of this is the reverse of that, and you're seeing yeah, the same exactly. type of impact. We, we want people to work. We want people to be producing, but we don't want them to be penalized if they choose not to get the vaccination. Um, I think that that should be a personal choice, and we should continue to encourage, uh, but not mandate. And when it comes to the fight against COVID in general, trying to get our economy back up and running and getting people back to work, you actually wrote a letter to the president and you talked about um, how he should be focusing more on therapeutics, right? We've been saying that for a while right now when all of the focus was on the vaccine. And so here we are, cases are spiking and we don't have the tools we need to help people live their daily lives um, with COVID, you know, and accepting that COVID is a part of it. Yeah, it's interesting to hear the president now say that it should be on the states to resolve this issue. There, Look, it needs to be a multifaceted approach. Local, state, and federal government need to work together. Uh, but what can the federal government do? Well, in my opinion, we should be encouraging uh, production of the an uh, monoclonal antibodies, making sure that there's enough of that. New York City hospitals are saying that they don't have enough to treat people. Other, I've read in Michigan, they're having a similar issue. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're ramping up that. That's where the president could be helpful, uh, making sure the FDA is approving these treatments and therapeutics in a timely fashion, not sitting on these applications uh, is another thing that we could be doing. Uh, but in, sh in you know, in, in, if, if that's the case, he really should be repealing these mandates uh, if he feels yeah. that the federal government shouldn't be interfering in what the states are doing. But I think that therapeutics and treatment is the way to go. Look, this, this, this virus has taken multiple forms, multiple variants. Uh, it's here to stay. We need to learn to adjust to live with it. Uh, and I think treatments and therapeutics is the way to be doing it in a, in a, in a rational way, a balanced way. Um, so instead of mandates and, and firings mm -hmm. and fines and all these restrictions, let's focus on treating people when they do get sick. And look, if you're vaccinated, like I, I was, I got mild symptoms uh, when I was tested positive a couple weeks ago, and, and now I am better. And I, you know, it, it, was, it was a mild case. So we have to learn to just live with this and adjust to it uh, going forward. You just can't shut down and overreact uh, every time we see a spike in uh, positive cases. Amen. Congresswoman, great to see you. Thank you so much today for your time today. Thank you. All right. Uh